Hey there guys! Welcome back to my channel in this year, Teacher, Teacher Daryl Del Mundo. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so that you will be notified and updated to my EduSci vlogs. Okay? So today, we will have our new topic which is all about relationships. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I know that you like relationships. But this time, the relationship that we are going to tackle, it's all about ecological relationships. Are you ready to listen? Okay, let us start with this. Welcome back mga kabayo and my beloved students. So today, this is our topic. It is all about ecological relationships. So ecological relationships simply means the interactions between the living organisms or non-living to living or both living organisms. And later on, we will answer the question, how do biotic factors influence each other? So as we go on to our topic, you will know how do they influence each other or how this interaction happens. But before that, let us start know this some unfamiliar and familiar words to you. Let us start with biodiversity. Biodiversity is the number of species in an ecosystem. Bio means life and diversity are differences. Okay? A differences of organisms in a specific location. So, the next word is territory. Space claimed by an individual organism. So, if a place is owned by a specific uh, living thing, that is considered their territory. And then the third word is all about ecological equilibrium. A state of balance in an ecosystem. Maintain the balance, okay, in the environment that is ecological equilibrium. So, we have biodiversity, territory, and then ecological equilibrium. And then we have the next one, it's all about the niche. Okay, can you say it? Okay, very good, niche. The role of one organism in the ecosystem, or we can consider this is their job, okay? And niche diversity, it is the number of niches in an ecosystem often determined by abiotic factors. Abiotic factors are the non-living things such as like water, like sunlight, and then we have rocks, soil, okay, water, and uh, humidity. Okay, those are the abiotic factors that can eat, can have an interaction between living organisms, okay, between biotic and abiotic factors. And then we can say that a niche is the sum of all activities and relationships a species has while obtaining and using resources needed to survive and reproduce. Okay, that's very important. Okay, and then to start with, let us know what competition is all about. So competition, when species or individuals fight, okay, the same resources. If they share the same resources, for example, food, shelter, and even mate. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of competition in the ecosystem. It happens all the time there. And remember, a predator that caused a large increase in diversity of its habitat. Okay? And at the same time, we can say that competition, two species with similar needs for same limited resources cannot coexist because you know what will happen next. Okay? And we have the next one, herbivory. Okay? Herbivory is a mode of nutrition of an organism. It is we can say they are the first consumer, okay? A primary consumer feeds on a producer. Remember, plants are producer and animals are consumer and herbivores are the first consumer or the primary consumer. As you can see there, we have the fruit but eating a papaya and then a woodhack eating a wild clover, okay? And in addition to that, we call animals that eat plants are herbivores and animals that eat meat are carnivores and animals that eat both plants and meats are called omnivores. Those animals who eat only fruits are called frugivores and those animals can eat detritus are called detritivores. Okay? 
So, that's additional information to you. So, next, we have predation. Predation is a consumer feeds on another consumer. You can see there the predator and the prey. So, we have here eagle and a halibut. And then, we have a lion eating the zebra. So, the lion and the eagle are the predators while the halibut and the zebra are the prey. Okay? Predators are the one who eats. And the one that is being eaten are the prey. Okay? That's predation. And then let's go to the next one. Symbiosis. Symbiosis simply means a long-term relationship where two species live closely together and at least one benefits directly from the relationship. So uh, this is a good one because one is benefiting from the other. Okay? As you can see there, we have a flower and a butterfly. Okay, the butterfly benefits the flower and the flower benefits also the butterfly, vice versa. Okay? So, let's start with mutualism. So, in mutualism, both organisms benefit from the relationship. It's like a win-win situation. Like the bee there and then uh, the flower. So, it's like a positive and a positive. Okay? And next, we have pollination under mutualism. Remember, plants can reproduce in the presence of pollination. So plants must attract the pollinators like insects, birds, bats, small mammals. For example, the flower may have a scent that pollinators like. Okay? So they need to attract those pollinators so that they can reproduce. Okay, then that is mutualism. Remember, plants get pollen transported and the pollinator gets nectar, a sugar-rich solution as a food source. That's a good example of it, right? And then, we have mutualism also between raccoon and poison ivy. As you can see there, a raccoon eats the berries of the poison ivy and disperses the seeds as it poops both benefits, a food, and at the same time for reproduction. Okay? And then, we also have what we call commensalism. One organism benefits, the other one is unaffected. It's like win-neutral relationship. One is benefiting, the other one, oh, it's okay, I'm not affected by it. Okay? It's like a positive and a neutral relationship. Okay? So, under commensalism, we have this eastern chipmunk and the soil mite. So, you can see there that chipmunk is a mammal that burrows. And then, uh, the soil mite feeds off the leaf litter but cannot burrow itself. So, the mite uses the chipmunk's tunnel to travel from one place to another. They are very genius. See the relationship between the two? And then, we have the next example of commensalism, the pear-shaped puffballs gets opened and spores dispersed by a possum. So the puffballs benefits, a possum is not affected. See? It's a good relationship. And then we have parasitism. One organism benefits while the other one is harmed. Oh no, this is not a good one. Win-lose relationship. It's like a positive and a negative relationship. So parasites rarely kill their hosts it would require them to get another one. So that is the worst case scenario. The parasites can kill their host so that they can infect another one. Okay? Because they're not going to get anything from it if it's already dead. Okay? So they need to go from one host to another host. That's why they are called parasites. Maybe you have one kind of friend who is like a parasite. <laughs> uh, do not name them, by the way. And an example of this also is this dogwood tree is parasitized by the honeysuckle. So it's like the dogwood doesn't have any nutrition at all because the honeysuckle suck it from the dogwood tree. Okay? And then the other one, example, remember this one? The leech is sucking a blood from a human or any kinds of animal. So uh, like the leeches or the leech is benefiting from the host sucking blood. It's very scary. And then, another one, a bullfrog acts as a host of the big red worm parasite. Oh no, I don't like that. Sometimes you have that in your tummy, like in your intestines, the tapeworms, the ascaris, oh, they can live there. And they are called parasites also in the human body. Okay? And then, in addition to this one, we have the ecological relationships 
that focuses on biological magnification. From the word biological magnification, it increases the concentration of poisons in organisms in higher trophic levels in a food chain or food web. So, as you can see there, the red small beads are the toxins in the water. So, it can be engulfed or eaten by small fishes. Then later on, those small fishes will be eaten by large fishes or big fishes. And then, the fishes, those big fishes in the ocean can be eaten by a human. So, that toxin is being magnified. Okay? So, the worst case scenario, the human who ate that fish who has that toxin magnificated and at the same time like uh, body of that big fish the human will eventually die okay and another one another thing we have in also in biological magnification the accumulation of increasing amounts of toxins with tissues of organisms so it can be affected the entire organism or the entire food chain all organisms in the food chain or even in the food web they are all affected by it okay do not forget that and for additional information about ecological relationships i want you to look at this okay the end of our topic which is all about ecological relationships so class mga kabayo my beloved students do not forget to answer your online quiz on the description below do not forget to read first the questions carefully and submit it to me okay kudos and god bless you all hello there again thank you so much for watching this video do not forget to like share subscribe share it to your friends and let us learn science in a meaningful way bye teacher da signing off